Hi guys, it's James from dreamweavertutorial.co.uk. Today I'll be taking you through the processes of installing custom fonts using typekit.com's font foundry. So I'll be taking a little title like this and turn it into a custom title like this. The great thing about these custom fonts is that they are fully readable by the search engines. They are also standards compliant and they load in super quick as well as making your content look very engaging to your web visitors. Now using the method I show you, you'll be able to load in these custom fonts but still retain the original CSS styling like the colour, the size and any link hover effects you originally had. But I'll also show you how to override some of these styles if you need to. Okay, so we just need to set up an account, paste some JavaScript into the head of the page we want the custom fonts to appear and then apply a class to that text. Right, so here we are at typekit.com's website and the service is completely free for two fonts with no more than 25,000 page views per month. So if you run these fonts on one or two pages then most of you will be fine. It's free to sign up and you don't need a credit card or any type of security. So I'm going to go ahead and press the sign up button now. It's a pretty standard form so I'm just going to put in my first name, my last name, my email address and a password. The terms of service are pretty standard and uh, I'm going to click to agree to terms of service and create the account. And when you do that you'll get onto another screen which will detail uh, the browser support. Now it is supported in Internet Explorer 6 and higher and all the major five browsers there. Okay so it's time to carry on and I'm going to click get started and we're going to start creating our kit. So I'm going to put in a name for the kit, I'm going to call it fonts and I'm going to specify the domain that I'm going to be using for the fonts and that will be dreamweavertutorial.co.uk. So I'll click continue now and uh, you'll see some JavaScript which needs to go into the head of your document where you want the fonts to appear. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go over to Dreamweaver and I'm going to paste that into the head of the web page I'd like it to appear into. Okay, so I'm going to put it into my Dreamweaver Tutorials landing page and also in the index page. So I'm going to double click on my landing page and open up the source code. Now I'm going to go into the head of the document, which you can see here. Now ideally you want to get this uh, below your CSS document, but my CSS document is locked down because it's inside of a template. So I'm just going to paste it in just below the keywords tag there. So in it goes, paste it in, and you'll see that it's working okay because the script type comes up in red. You've got the open and closing script there. And this will go and find the font when it's attached as a class and load it into your web page for you. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to go back into the Typekit website and click continue. And uh, it will say that we're ready to go and find some fonts. So I'm going to go and click on that uh, link there. And uh, they've got a pretty extensive library of fonts. Now here's the landing page for the fonts. You can either select them by headlines or paragraphs, or you can select um, certain types of font styles. Or I'm going to browse by all the styles, all the fonts, and uh, there's over 15 pages of fonts on the trial version, and uh, it's pretty extensive, all different types. Now, the one I'm going to put into my website is called English Small Caps. It comes with one style, and um, it's pretty simple. You just click onto the style there, and uh, you'll get a list of options, and you can check how it will look in your browser. You can check browser types. So we'll do that now, I'm going to click on that and here's some sample text as you can see in the box below there and it will even tell you it's 95k when it loads in which is pretty small. Right, so I'm going to click on the type tester and here we can type in our own text to see if we get a feel of what the font's like and whether we like it or not. So I'm going to delete the text that's in there and I want to type in jQuery slideshow plugin which is my latest tutorial. So I'm going to type that in to see what that looks like and um, hopefully it will suit. Okay, I'm loving the queue at the moment there, it looks really good. Okay, so jQuery slideshow plugin, and uh, there's a, a little slider up 
just above the text then you can slide it up and down to see how the text would look if it was smaller or larger. Now it's completely lossless so no matter how big you go it will retain the, the style, the nice style there. And uh, here is the compatibility, we can see how it will look in Safari depending on which operating system you're using. Um, you can also check what it would look like in Internet Explorer, um, what it would look like in Opera and uh, various different um, web browsers there. Okay, so when you're happy with your font and what it looks like, you can go up to the top and click on the Add to Kit button. And that's going to load up the Typekit editor where we can start setting the classes um, that we can use to load in that font into our Dreamweaver website. Now, depending on the font that you choose, you'll have different weights and styles to choose from here. Uh, you might have bold settings or italic. Uh, this one's just a regular font. Now, just above that, there's the selectors area. Now, here is a suggested selector that we can use in our web design to attach to the fonts that we want to change to the English small caps. I don't like that particular selector, though. It's a bit too long. Now, there's a suggested way of doing it and uh, setting default styles there, but trust me, this is the easiest easiest way to do it. Now I'm going to delete that one because I think it's a bit long that selector. I'm going to create my own selector that's easy to remember. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to set my own selector and I'm just going to call it dot English. Now you could, could set it as an ID and put pound English if you want to, but I'm going to put dot English as a class. So uh, I've set that class now and it's now been recognized. Okay, now before I start publishing this font, I'm going to go back into Dreamweaver and I'm going to set that class style in my CSS document. Now down here is where I want to apply the font, the jQuery image rotator uh, title just there. Now I'm going to go inside of my CSS, which is called index.css. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to create a separate comment area and space where I'm going to apply that class. So I'm going to create a small little comment here and comment the area out just so it's separate from the rest of my styles. And I'm going to type Typekit font styles there. And, um, and I'm going to set the class. Now I'm just going to put the class in for now. And then we're going to go into the HTML. So I'm going to put dot .english and open and close curly braces. Now Dreamweaver will recognize that. So if I wanted to um, apply it from um, the properties panel, it would now recognize it as a class attribute. Okay, so back in code view now, I'm going to highlight my title and here it appears inside of code view. Now it's also a link, there's a link attached to this particular, particular title. So I can apply that class inside with link text if I want to and I'm going to do just that just after the file path there. Now uh, you can apply it to the H3 tag if you wanted to, um, so you type that inside of the H3. Um, now I'm going to type it here inside of the link so it will be a link with a class and the class is equal to English so class English that could have been h3 class equals English but on this occasion I'm applying it to the link now it can also go inside of a paragraph if you wanted to so that would be p class equals English or any other attribute that you have inside of your designs for now though, I just want it to apply to the link text within the H3 tag. Okay, so here's my class, it's all set. Now what I want to do is um, I'm going to upload my index.css file. So I've just clicked inside of that and I've clicked on the put button and that's going to put my CSS file. And then I'm going to upload the page which will have all of those, the styles, the class English and it will also have the type kit uh, script hooks at the top of the head document. So that's done now and we can go back into type kit. So I'm going to click on the publish button at the bottom of the screen and uh, don't be surprised it could take up to five minutes for this font to be recognized by your website. Um, it should be instant but it can take up to five minutes. So I'm just going to click on my Dreamweaver section to see if it appears. And here is the font and as you can see it's not one of your standard Dreamweaver type fonts and uh, I think what we need to do is make it a little bit larger so I'm going to go back into my CSS and I'm going to change the font size. 
Okay, so back in Dreamweaver now, and I'm gonna click on my index.css file, and notice just to the left, that's our Typekit JavaScript file. That will be added to the top of your Dreamweaver page there, along with your Sprite validation and any other um, scripts files that you have for that page. Now, I'm in the .english um, class attribute there, and I'm gonna add a property which is font-size, I'm going to change it to 36 pixels. Now it already has a font size applied to it, but I'm going to override it with this class English. So if it has a, a class of English applied to any link uh, within my H3, it's going to change the font size to 36 pixels, and that's exactly what it's done. Now, for those of you who put a different font size in and it isn't working for you, you can override any style in your in your web page by adding the important property to any style that you specify and that will override it and it will change the font size for you so I'm going to put the file back up this is my CSS file I'm uploading that to my server and uh, I'm going to go back into Dreamweaver and press the refresh button and here's my updated font with the 36 uh, pixel size well, I think that looks really good. Um, so if I wanted to change the paragraph just below and make that a class of English also, it's going to apply the 36 pixel font size. And I, I'd kind of like it to have that font style, but I wouldn't want the paragraph text to be 36 pixels. It'd be too large and it'd be the same size as the title and defeat the object. So we can create another uh, class selector inside of the typekit editor and uh, we can specify a different selector and i'm going to call this one dot english underscore p and press the add button and that's added the extra class there so the typekit uh, editor will recognize that when i load that into my web page so i'm going to go back into my source code i've just found the paragraph text there and I'm going to call that a class of English underscore P. And then I'll set the selector inside of my CSS document. Okay, so I'm going to go into my CSS file now. I'm going to create the selector and it's going to be dot English underscore P open and close curly braces. And I'm going to set a new font size, a smaller font size. And I'm going to type font dash size colon 16 pixels. And I'm also going to add that important selector just so it overrides any existing styles applied to the paragraph there. So I'm going to put my CSS file up to my server. I'm also going to put my web page uh, to my server as well. And uh, make sure I press publish from within inside the Typekit editor. And here's my updated font there. Okay, so it's got the same style font. It's just a different size because we're using two different uh, class selectors there. Okay, so web designers are no longer restricted to just using the standard accessibility fonts. And we can now load in custom fonts and not just from typekit.com. There are a growing number of premium font foundries that have sprung up like fonts.com, font squirrel, fonts live and font deck. And there's even the Google font API and Google fonts directory, which is completely free. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I'll leave a link in the description bar for you to come to my website and there'll be a full list of those font foundries for you. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This is James from dreamweavertutorial.co.uk. Bye for now.